Hey, Redcon Raider here. With special thanks to the Raiders, the fine folks who help make these videos possible. Including but not limited to Matthew Smith, Revenant, Aloise, A Nerd in War Paint, Dragon Matrix 7, Eerie V23, Excelsior, Goatlieb, Kazorm, Nathan Welch Jr., Robbie B., Thomas Pietkowski, Trip Hop and Skip, and Valenrook. Thanks for your support, guys. That said, let's get started. And welcome back to Solasta, Lost Valley, as the adventure continues. Last time around, we uh, pretty thoroughly burned our bridges with the Dominion. But that's fine. It allows us to continue exploring and expanding our relationship with the various other factions. With our focus today being on the people and the rebels. Um, I am still curious about the mask, though. I mean, I don't think we're going to ultimately end up working with them. They do have a very villainous air about them. But I would at least like to get a better idea of what their deal is before we officially cut ties. Uh, regardless, before we do anything today, we've got a level up in the queue, so we need to take care of that first. And as a uh, an added bonus, that will also pass some time and hopefully unlock the next quest in the Rebel Chain for us. Then we'll just uh, figure out where we're headed from there. And level 10. Let's see what we've got here. Eben officially eclipses 100 hit points, pulls some more spell options, and finally picks up Spell Tyrant, the telekinetic ability to shove opponents by simply looking at them. That's what I've been wanting for a while now, so I look forward to playing with that. He still has some uh, decent abilities in the queue as well. Looking at his chart here, we've got an extra attack at 11, which is huge. And then some extra attribute points after that, which will probably go towards strength. As for spells, uh, Eben picks up a new cantrip, which honestly isn't really that big a deal at this point. I feel like he's gotten so mobile that we'll usually be able to reach an opponent. But, you know, I guess his big weakness is his lack of area attack, so... So that kind of leans me towards the one cantrip that targets multiple foes. Acid Splash, which can apparently target two. I don't think we'll ever actually use it, but it's a nice option to have. Then as far as his normal spells go, uh, this one's pretty straightforward. We're just going to re-grab Spider Climb, which we dropped at level 9 to make room for Knock. Next, we've got Thygor, who gains even more hit points, as well as the Rock Solid ability, which, as aforementioned, is a huge get for him. That's up to a possible plus 4 AC per round, depending on how many enemies we can get him adjacent to. At 11, he basically picks up a save versus death while raging. And then at 12, even more rage. And plus 2 attribute points, which will either go into strength or con. After that, we've got Garvin. More hit points, more spells. And shared pain which, uh, as established, will complete Spiegel's transformation into a mobile hit point battery. Shared Pain lets them split any damage that they receive once per turn. That will keep both of them up and able much more efficiently. Not a lot to say beyond that, I think. Uh, with both Garvin and Mora, I believe they're pretty much done gaining special class abilities at this point. From here on out, it's just hit points and spells. Though I guess technically spells are class abilities, so there's that. 
And speaking of spells, Garvin also pulls a new cantrip. And honestly, there's nothing here I think I'd burn a full action on. So I think we'll just grab Sparkle instead. It's always handy to have someone else who can light things up as needed. Then for his new actual spell, we will prepare... Not Dark Vision. Uh, but instead, Dispel Magic, which honestly is a bit overdue. I feel like we really should have probably taken that one sooner, but better late than never. Which finally brings us to Mora, who is honestly just more of the same. More hit points, more spells, and a third meta magic option. Her hit points are a bit on the low side, that is somewhat concerning, though she does have aid to fall back on. That is, however, something I'm keeping in the back of my brain as something we might need to rectify. As far as meta magic goes, I'm not really crazy about any of her options here. You know, uh, I tend to balance it against the options we already have, and nine times out of ten I just see us leaning on empowered or twinned rather than any of these other options. That said, we uh, have to take one, and given that we've recently gotten some decent usage out of spells like Hold and Banish, I guess uh, we'll go ahead and grab Heightened. That'll be a decent option for those rare occasions where we're facing off against a single powerful foe, and we just really want that uh, Banish or Hold to stick. As far as cantrips go, we'll grab Ray of Frost. That's a nice counterpoint to uh, Firebolt. And then for a real spell, we'll just go ahead and grab Hold Monster, finish the uh, Banish Hold Trifecta. I would go with Dominate, but uh, I remember that being pretty problematic back in Crown of the Magister. I'm not sure if they fixed it or not, but I'm thinking that one might just best be avoided to keep things simple. We're getting plenty of mileage out of Hold. And that's it. That's level 10. Pretty straightforward, but uh, another huge power boost for our merry band of murder hobos. Did we get a new quest? We did not. Cool, so that means they're going to call us back right after we leave. That's always fun. <laughs> All right, I guess we'll uh, head out then. Okay, well, since the uh, rebels were being indecisive, I guess that means we're pursuing the people's next project, which was to recover a stolen stash of food. Which I guess means we're headed for Satil's outpost. Where is Satil's outpost? I don't think we've seen that one. Right, so we'll take down that outpost, we'll grab the food supplies, we'll go have a chat with Rhea, and by that point, the rebels should also have something new for us. Nice, nice. Oh, and uh, I did get some potential new armor for Mora going. Studded Leather of Survival. We had parts to spare, and I figured we might as well have some ready if we do go that route. But, you know, we'll uh, see if we ever actually find any sorcerer robes. And Eben will get a Belt of Regen. That'll either go to uh, Thygor or Garvin. Uh, yeah, yeah, let's do this. I think art mages can actually drop some halfway decent loot.
Now we do pretty heavily outclass these guys. But we also want to use our resources sparingly in this fight. Because we're headed straight into an outpost fight afterwards. And that could end up being much more dangerous. Hey, Kaiser. I hear you, Bebo. I'm right here. No, I haven't become invisible because you're behind a shelf. Kaiser, I can't get up. I'm recording. There you go. Hey, Bebo. Arcana, Muto, Viribe. A modest success. Yes, I know. Ellie has stolen your bed. That's what happens when you leave it unattended. I trained hard for this. Kaiser. Kaiser. <laughs> you gotta make up your mind, baby. Salasta Evo Malmi. Light at last. All right, that's that's fine. Kaiser's blocking like a quarter of the screen right now, but he's just sort of chilling out. And thankfully, okay, there he goes. Did you just, I think he just tapped the microphone. <laughs> Alright, well, no harm done. Just Kaiser being Kaiser. I'll clean it up in post. Bleed. It's funny, I do, uh, I do get people who ask why I don't just close the door to my recording area, and honestly, it's because that makes it a million times worse. When you try to lock a cat out of something, they are not just going to accept it. You'll die like the rest. At least not my cats anyway. Then you just end up with a Jack Nicholson from uh, The Shining situation. And instead of cute cat noises, you end up with literal caterwauling as they try to find their way through or around Hold firm. You've endured worse. The offending barricade. A palpable hit. Anyway, let's get this wrapped up. Nicely done. Thank you, Mora. Natura Encho Malme. Let's go ahead and top off Spiegel. We don't want him going down. Natura Evo Curi. Oh, again, harder. Oh. 
That's the veterans. This is a good opportunity for Spell Tyrant. Hmm. Range is shorter than I thought. Okay, well, this is slightly problematic because he's blocking the only jump point on that platform. Didn't think you could do it. There we go. That should prompt him to move. Uh, if we... If we block... The cat walks, he'll have to go down. It seems effortless. That works. Again, harder. And we're pretty much done. He's pinned in. And we are done. Slightly more time consuming than intended, but let's see if it was worth it. Archmages have multiple magic drops. Dust of Disappearance. I mean, we'll take it. And a Periapt of Health. So yes, absolutely well worth the fight.
Yeah, yeah, that'll uh, save us the trouble of whipping up another Belt of the Barbarian King. Though I suppose we could have just bought one of these things, but, you know, better to find it. Um, that might go to Mora. That would help offset her lower HP. At level 10, that would be a what? An extra... An extra 30 hit points? Yeah, 12 to 19 con. Sorry, an amulet of health. Not to be confused with a periapt, which takes the exact same item slot. We'll hold off on uh, re cadoodling our attunement loadout just yet. I have to decide what we can live without on Mora, which I guess. I guess would most logically be the periapt of Master Enchanting, but... But again, uh, her final equipment loadout really is going to come down to whether or not we find some decent magic robes. Ah, <laughs> you know what? I, for some reason, I thought we were much closer to Sardis outpost when we encountered those guys. I would have gone all out if I'd realized we still had a long rest. Oh, well. Huh, and yet another layout. You know, I'm actually kind of impressed they didn't just copy-paste each outpost, considering how many there are. Though, I mean, obviously we can see familiar elements, like the, uh, the elaborate series of gantries and ladders and back. But I appreciate that they basically established a series of different components and mixed and matched them for each outpost. It's a small thing, but it is a nice touch. I feel like there's a lot of games, even AAA games, that would have just gone ahead and copy-pasted and been done with it. And with no real tower to set up on, I guess we'll just bring the whole party up. We do have this cage platform over here, but that that honestly does not look like a very ideal place to set up shop. Stay away. This air Shut up. All right, well, if you're just going to auto spot me on approach, I'll just blow you up from here. Could everyone stop moving real quick? I need to kill you. It's forbidden. Thank you. Even for you. Yikes. Looks like they're actually upping the guards on these outposts. Hopefully we don't have to do too many more of these things. It will start feeling repetitive.
Moving up. You lose. That's one. I guess that one archer passed her surprise check. Good for her. We don't have vigil. Okay, well, the uh, LOS is just not cooperating, so I guess we'll do this instead. I trained hard for this. Get Spiegel on the Arcanist. That'll keep him distracted. I don't believe it. Let's go for some crowd control. Okay, okay. That's fine. That'll at least keep the archer off our backs. That's three down, one neutralized. Canist on the run. Rookies, a soft target. Enforcement's coming from the rear. But we've got choke points at those ladders. Ha! 
Take that, you fiend. That's the caster. And we will, of course, block off this ladder. Spiegel on the other archer. already got a hold up. So let's go for twinned guiding. Yeah. You'll get us all killed. Alright, Garvin, calm down. Only so high strong. Take Thigor to new heights. Well struck. Too worried about those guys. So let's stay focused on the tower. I don't suppose we can pull the archer through that gap. I didn't think so. I just really want to force push someone. Arcana, Evo, Malmis. Fortune is fickle. One archer. Now 
Natura Encho Malmis. You like that? Nice, nice. don't like that, though. The last thing we need is Lairin catching a stray arrow. A palpable hit! Tower's clear. Courtyard's clear. Keep harassing the archer. Fair enough. Firing through those cages would be a pretty tricky shot. If, uh, if Lairin was close enough, I'd be tempted to pop her out just to see if she could land that kill. We are pretty much done at this point. Good job, kids. There's a mountain of food here. Indeed. Grown by the people for the people. Thank you again. We owe you so much. I need to organise distribution, but when it's done, I'll return to the safe house in the city. Meet me there if you want to help more. We'll see what we can do. You've gone too far to stop. The people regard you as heroes now. Do we drink for free at the safe house, then? I hope we can play darts with the portrait of the Lord Protector. This is serious, friends. We'll see you soon, Rhea. Rhea, it is great to see you out here. But if you were going to come here anyway, you probably could have just joined our party. 
Interesting that they would just have her pop up like that, considering we still have to go back and turn the quest in with Rose. Okay. Oh. Okay. Now we're done. Halfway decent fight. Another quest under our belt. We'll head back to Care Hifred and turn this thing in with Rose. See what else she's got for us. And then we'll uh, head back to the Rebel Headquarters. Find out what their next step is as well. Rhea, good to, good to see you again. Here, buy all this stuff that you could have helped me carry back. Okay, let's go have words with Rose. And pet drooly. I forgot to do that last time around. Here you are. Any problems entering the city? As you said, the guards aren't that bright. They don't even patrol the temple. Good. I have something to confess. Uh, what? I'm not the leader of the people in the city. Who then? Our favorite little beggar. Rose? Leader is a big word for me. Let's say I don't have much else to do but help my friends. No offense, but does it matter? Not really. But Rose has found some important information. <laughs> We're all ears. Oronetis has a secret place, hidden deep in the jungle. He used to go there every week using some kind of magical gate. But not anymore. We know that some of his opponents have been taken there as well as slaves from outside the valley. We could have been among them. You? Escaped slaves, yes. I believe something happened in that secret complex. Maybe a slave uprising. Whatever's going on, it's still guarded from the outside. If you agree to go, I can give you a map. Free our people. That's all we ask. Freeing slaves? You don't even have to ask. Give us the map. We're in. Many thanks, friends. Okay, first up, uh, I love that uh, Eben just straight up called out how pointless the twist with Rose was. That was fantastic, and it really kind of makes me wonder why they even included it. I guess it would actually matter if, like, Oranetis had sent us to kill the leader of the people. Hey, ya. Hey, ya. Uh, aside from that, the secret complex they're referring to, I'm pretty sure that's the same place that Gartok wanted us to check out. 
So, um... That makes me wonder if every faction eventually wants you to go check that place out. I was warned that if we went there too early, after Gartok asked us to do it, that it would break a bunch of sequences, and this must be why. I'll bet if we go talk to the rebels now, they'll also want us to go investigate this mysterious complex. Maybe? How many? I'm not sure how many quests we've done for them yet. They might have one or two more filler quests for us first, but I guess we'll go find out. Uh, I have also been told that apparently the uh, the Temple of Misai is uh, in fact tied to the Masked Faction, which again does make sense given that uh, as of our last meeting they confirmed that they are in fact worshippers of Misai. I guess that would explain why I just could not find any way to interact with or open that mysterious jail cell. Oh, right. Okay. We have to walk back to the lower city first. There we go. And back to Dinas Gessa. Ghostly couple. Nothing we haven't seen before, but we're being ambushed, so no choice on this one. Has Lairin's luck finally run out? a skeleton. Their defining feature is that they are not but bone. to get Leyren away from these things. Okay, 20% down on Eben. Nothing to worry about just yet.
Lairin, run away! See, the fact they didn't go for Lairin does seem to imply there's some sort of weird target prioritization or randomization system I am not really fathoming when it comes to these enemies. Because if they did generally go for the weakest or most vulnerable targets, Lairin would have been dead 20 times over by now. Solid hits. Keep them coming. Inappropriate, Garvin. It's not that kind of party. And we're done. Lairin lives to lurk another day. Granted, mostly just a filler fight this time around, but it was fairly short and it does get us one step closer to level 11. It would be nice to hit max before we wrap this thing up. And as per the age-old rule of random encounters, we should be safe for the rest of our journey. There's our studded leather of survival, which we may or may not end up using. Let's go have a chat with our rebel contact, and then we'll hit the pause button. Clear skies, my lady. How did it go with your superior? Well enough. He has a further test for you. And when do we get to meet the man? Who said it is a man? You said he. I suppose I did. He does not trust easily. Just give us something to chew on. 
We have so many questions. Fine. What do you want to know? Oh, we actually get to choose stuff. Okay. Something's wrong with Orinetis. He's not a simple tyrant. I'm glad you noticed. Our leader says that he was not always like this. He's hiding something deep in the swamps. We're still looking for it. Your superior. He wants to replace Orinetis and rule the valley? It is in his destiny to rule. Different name, same tyranny. I am well placed to guarantee the opposite. We want to return home, but we can't get past the Redeemers. Home? Well, I'm afraid only Orinetis controls the Redeemers. You could try strength, but their juggernauts are so powerful. We're here looking for a man called Marin Ving. Ah, the cultist guru. What? There is word of a new cult in the valley. A human has gathered some followers. They worship a goddess, though their creed remains obscure. It has attracted all kinds of thieves, gamblers, beggars, even street clowns. Sounds a lot like Missoye. One of your outside deities? Perhaps. So, where can we find the cultists? I have no idea. Not here, I hope. Well, it looks like helping you get to Orinetis could help us escape the valley. How can we help the rebellion further? We plan to take control of all the outposts at once. It would send a powerful message to the people. I'll mark them on your map if you like. We'll see what we can do. Then, I'll gladly give you rebellion banners to raise. All right. See you around. Oh, wow. Okay. We have a lot to unpack there. Oh my goodness, and that is far too, far, far too many outposts. Yeah, I'm not sure we're going to do that. That would be like another four or five outpost battles. Not to mention, we already handed some of those outposts over to other factions. Stay true. All right. Uh, we are pushing the hour mark, so we need to wrap this up, but um, just some quick final parting thoughts. Uh, first of all, uh, our chat with the Rebels there does seem to confirm that the secret complex is indeed some sort of ultimate convergence point for this sort of tangle of story threads we've been following. The people already asked us to check it out. Gartok asked us to check it out. The Rebels are investigating it. And uh, I imagine if we went back and talked to Hasdrubal, he'd want us to go look at it, too. And uh, secondly, they dropped some major bombs about the actual leadership of the various factions. Um, obviously, the Rose thing wasn't a big deal, at least not from our angle. But I, I can't see how it would be relevant under certain circumstances. And then they're getting pretty heavy handed with uh, the idea that the rebel leader is some sort of monster. I'm leaning away from Dragon because of the notes we found about how the Anferals were related to like a famous anti-dragon warrior of some sort. But I could easily see it being some sort of undead. Um, the ancient Elven King we met back in Crown of the Magister was a, a ghost. So it would make sense if this guy is something similar. Given the uh, giant glowing boss door, I'm guessing Lich, something with access to vast magical power. And then the biggest reveal was kind of that uh, that double back to the original reason we're even in this valley in the first place. The escapee, Marin Ving, who is apparently leading the Masked, the Cult of Maasai. That does make me wonder if we, uh, if we push their quest line a little farther along and finally meet Marin Ving face to face. Could we then double cross him and immediately take him down? I'll have to poke at that a bit, because if it turns out we can, I may I may hold my nose and frame that innkeeper just long enough for us to take down our primary target. But yeah, yeah, uh, lots to mull over. Lots of things finally coming together. That said, we will uh, hit the pause button for now. I'm going to go and uh, try to figure out our next move. 
and we will pick up here next time. See you then. Oh, and remember, although I do love playing Solesta Lost Valley, you can find out more about the game by visiting the official websites. And if you'd like to help support the channel, then feel free to push the buttons that do the things, or maybe even check out the Patreon or new YouTube memberships. Links are in the description. No offense, but does it matter? Not really.